Hey everyone, I'm Rather Incoherent, and today we'll be talking about Stellacar. I played her as the main Kluver using the Difficulty Zero archetype and website of Dream Eaters, and she did really, really well. Especially in the second half. In fact, to such a degree that I would say this might come off as a hot take initially. It's gonna make sense, I promise. She reminds me of Jenny Barnes. She is incredible once she has a couple scenarios under her. Once she's gotten a little bit of experience with these permanents, she's just off to the races, straight to the moon, incredible. But before those first couple scenarios, when you're working with zero experience, and you're just trying to make the stat line of 3 2 3 4 do anything, it is actually pretty rough. She's still incredible. There's enough tools available to a survivor that you can make this stat line work much more effectively than a Ginny can. And you can come over to my tier list, and you can see Stella Clark makes it into my S tier. Her early game is decidedly weaker than the rest of her. But unlike Ginny, her early game works well enough. And then when you get to the end game, she's actually just like the same level of strength. Rather than being held down by her early game, she's able to overcome it and still stay in the top of my tier list. And I say this as somebody who struggled through the opening turns on Stella a couple of times now. Because this is my second time playing Stella. She was actually one of the first characters I ever played. With one exception, that being my first one of her Garden Age, which should be right here as Winifred. So yes, you can see that correctly, that my first three campaigns, four because of Skids and the Gathering down here, were all rogues. I've always been my table's rogue, man, it's never going to change. But the next character I played when I started branching out from rogues after Harvey was Stella Clark and the Cyclopean Foundation's custom campaign. And coming over to the deck, you can see like we had a limited collection, no taboo list decks, a little bit nonsense, custom experience campaigns, or sorry, custom campaign experience numbers. If you're playing an untabooed red character, you should probably be running Key of Yeast, Backpack, Pete Sylvester, because the card's just busted. But barring that, this deck is still showcasing a pretty competent thing, which is just that the Pete Cleaver works really well in Stella Clark. And then you can do other shenanigans and get a lot of value out of just being a quick learner character. Drawing then is a card that would be absolutely wonderful to run in Stella, but at three experience, it's a lot harder to justify buying when you're already going deep into experience cards anyway, just to get your permanents online. Track shoes to fail for Stella's ability, like you just move and then take the test expecting to fail, so that you just get a free action out of the move. That's really nice. That's the thing I've wanted to fit in my other deck as well. There's a lot of things in here that are definitely worth taking a look at, but I'm not really going to comment on this deck any longer because it's an old deck with a limited collection, taboo list. These days, I just pretend Key of Yus is forbidden. So coming over to the Kluver I played, I think main Kluver with difficulty zero is a better build than Flex Stella. And the reason for that is pretty straightforward. Without Key of Yeast to boost your fist from three to six, you're really only swinging at five, which on your first action is going to be essentially swinging at three. So it doesn't really work very well to hit somebody as your first action, which as a Flex character doesn't feel very good. Additionally, fitting all this stuff in the deck, all of these things helping you draw faster, set up faster, and get clues faster, you have to cut clue finding speed for the flex cards, and I think she's good enough as a main cluever that I would rather do this. I started a video with a tirade about how weak she is at the start before she gets these permanents online. Because of that, I don't actually know that I built this deck right. I think maybe on your own's a trap. Sure, look what I found costs four when you play both of them. You've got Luckies, which are gonna cost you one until you find time to upgrade them. You've got Shedalites, those are two. True Survivor, that's a core card, that's three. Winging it, that might be two, it might be one. You might be recurring the cost, you might not. It depends on the draw order and if you can overdraw it. But you have a lot of experience, or sorry, expensive assets to play. So Own Your Own makes a lot of sense. There's not even an ally that really helps that much other than like Granny Orn. And Granny Orn's three experience anyway. You're still six experience in the hole, but then you're paying for Granny Orn and all of this, and how are you doing that? And the economy doesn't fit. So Own Your Own makes a lot of sense here. But maybe it makes more sense to cut and fix the economy and change things to not run this, because it's six more experience that you need before you get off the ground. When you look at this level zero deck, it just isn't that good. It's fine, it's good enough, it totally did its job and passed through those first couple scenarios. It got us to the fully experienced deck. I believe it full cleared every scenario it was in as the only clue finder. So like, I can't take that away from it. It's way better than a Ginny would be in scenario one. But this is a character where it's like you're putting together a puzzle and trying to solve everything. You need to be like recurring Shed Light. And the only way you can do that is by using Resourceful on another Shed Light. It's sort of like a puzzle character where you're going through all of these steps. It's a two shot location, cool. I'm able to use Mariner's Compass and reliably pass it. But if I do, I can't use Shed Light on anything else. I have to Shed Light. So instead, you're trying to piece together Mariner's Compass with like three resources and a perception. 
you're always struggling to mix and match your things precisely the right way so that you can get enough clues to do your job. And you can. not I think it's one of the hardest good decks to pilot in the game, whereas when you come into the final deck, this thing is brain dead. You just go. You do nothing on your first action. You move or you play something. Your second action, probably the same thing. You really don't do anything then. And hopefully you can fail a check and ideally fail a check with a live and learn to just get a free action. But either way, having failed a check, you'll have a third and fourth action where quick learners reducing everything by two. And at that point, you can do just absolute nonsense. You investigate a six shroud location with old key ring. Quick learner reduces it to four, key ring to two, a gumption to zero. You play shed a light. You get four clues without taking a test. And when you do it, by the way, we commit resourceful to get back true survivor which will itself get back Resourceful and two other cards. Late game Stella is absolutely brain dead busted. There's nothing to think about. There's nothing you can take away from it. And it keeps spending experience after this point. It's a really, really strong deck. And there's enough good clue finding red cards you can build it different ways. In the final scenario, I swapped out Sharp Vision for Nature of the Beast just to show off the card. They both do basically the same thing. Get one clue without doing anything else. I think Nature of the Beast is actually better in the deck after having played it. I think it's a criminally underrated card that's just absolutely fantastic. This thing is... It's a free clue, just first of all. Zero cost, fast, get a clue. Except, if you have dissonant voices in play, it still plays itself. You can't actually be stopped from playing this. And additionally, that reveal top three encounter cards, draw one and hand it out. That's not a downside, that's a benefit. This card can cost two experience, maybe even three. I would never buy it at three, at two, I'd seriously be considering it, but I'd probably take Sharp Vision. One's probably the right call for it to actually get played. But when you use this card, you can do things like you draw Ancient Evil's Crypt Chill Rotting Remains, and you hand Crypt Chill to the Mystic with an empty arcane asset and discard Rotting Remains and Ancient Evils. Nature of the Beast will pretty universally do something very positive for you. And if God forbid it did something bad, right? You have an enemy on the board your fighter hasn't handled, you're about to go into the Mythos phase, you hit upkeep, you get Nature of the Beast, you draw three enemies, and Nature of the Beast summons one of them. If you hadn't played Nature of the Beast, you would have just drawn three enemies during the Mythos phase. It would have been worse. Like, even in the situation where Nature of the Beast looks bad, the alternative was worse. It's still mitigating a nightmare. The card is nuts. I do really enjoy Stella Clark's final deck. I don't think I have another deck in the game where the entire deck is one color, not a single neutral card, just entirely, truly mono red. But yeah, she's brain dead broken. She is so strong once you get these, and then for a few more cheap cards, at a crossroads, Nature of the Beast, and Gumption, we're looking at a 20 experience deck. That's feature complete. You don't need the true survivors of the old key rings. As you can see, those were my next 12 experience. And it's a really, really strong deck. The whole issue with Stella, is getting there. I think she might be one of the harder characters to pilot. That's not to say she's going to be bad if you aren't good at the game. It's to say that she's going to perform meaningfully better if you build and play really intelligently. And I will make a note here. There's a lot of very obvious anti-synergy here. Automatically succeeding a difficulty zero test does not work well with failure. Neither does Lucky. Like, Stella isn't using her ability to her fullest in this list, and I think this list can actually be optimized and she could potentially move further up in my S tier. But she's just really, really strong as main Kluver. She's probably the best abuser of Kievius in the game if you're not pretending it has been banned, which I am. If your team really needs a flex character and you still want to play Stella, you can twist the deck and do that. You drop this uh, Dark Horse stuff, you add in backpacks, you add in meat cleavers, drop on your own and get Pete cut some of the clue finding to get some more economy to make the economy work. You can play this Stella as a flex as well. And I don't really have anything else to say about Stella because she's sort of simple. Like if your entire deck's one color, the deck's pretty streamlined towards one goal, I would imagine. And in this case it is. Every single card gets clues, gets clues, draws, makes me better at getting clues. Gets clues, draws, gets clues, gets clues, draw, nope sorry, gets clues, the other dilemma draws. Gets clues, draws, gets clues, makes me better at clues. This one makes me safe to the Mythos deck. Gets clues by drawing things that gets clues. If you play Resourceful on Nature of the Beast, it just actually turns into a deduction. It's very funny. Take Heart draws. And by the way, these Luckies and Limit Learns, they also make me safe to the Mythos deck. And in a roundabout way, that means that this isn't just draw, but Mythos protection for True Survivor. So yeah, the whole deck is just like, it does one thing insanely well. And you can twist it into a flex deck if your team needs a flex, but I think it's better like this. And either way, I'm wrapping up now. 
I've been Ryan Coherence. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, then I would like to inform you that liking, commenting, and subscribing will make my channel grow, which will in turn make me have a warm and fuzzy feeling in my heart, and I would appreciate that. And regardless of whether you do or not, I'll see you in the next one.